Okay, so I'm going to do this top ranking uh, best Academy Award winning pictures. The, you know, these are the movies that won best picture. And they are just the movies that I personally have seen and or own. <laughs> um, there are four, five, one, two, three, four, five movies on this list that I don't own. <laughs> And there's 27, and I'm going to go from 27 to 1. Um, at 27, I am putting All the King's Men from 1949. Now, it has been a little while since I've seen the movie, but I rented it, like, on Netflix a long time ago, and I watched it, and it was not, by far, not my favorite. Um... I didn't really like the material of it very much. It is very well acted. Um, and I will say that I, like the claim that I got or whatever was probably very well deserved. It just did not appeal to me. Um, and number 26 is Oliver from 1968. I am one who loves musicals. I absolutely love musicals. Musicals are my favorite genre, which I have stated many, many times, and this one is probably one of the worst musicals, along with um, Wizard of Oz, <laughs> that I have ever, and Willy Wonka, that I have ever seen, and I mean, thankfully, those two didn't win the, the or nominated, well, Willy Wonka wasn't nominated, but uh, Gone with the Air, uh, Wizard of Oz didn't win, but, um, because I would have not liked that. Ugh. Okay, at number 25 is The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King, which was the third installment of the trilogy in 2003. The other two movies were nominated. They didn't win. Um, I think... The Return of the King just kind of got everything on the last hurrah. Um, did not like the movie. It was really long. Really not not my kind of genre, number one. The only reason I watched it was my best friend and her husband were throwing a Lord of the Rings marathon. And my brother wanted to go. And he didn't want to go by himself. So I had to go, and my best friend didn't really want to watch it either. Not her kind of cup of tea. So I was there to be supportive of my brother and my best friend. So, and uh, yeah. Uh, and number 24 is The Steam from 1973. My mom loves this movie. I, on the other hand, do not. <laughs> uh, not the worst movie. On the list, granted, that goes to back to All the King's Men. There was a remake of All the King's Men. I heard that was really bad, but I never saw it. Anyway, back to this team. Not a big fan of the actors, um, although I do own a few Robert Redford films, so you might, you know, that kind of contradicts what I just said. But he's not the reason why I see our, uh, I saw them or own them. Um... And it's kind of funny I mentioned that because the next movie is also a Robert Redford movie. But anyway, back to this thing. I just, I thought it was boring. I thought that it was just not very good. Um, I watched the movie in high school for an extra credit project, and it just didn't fly in my book. At number 23, and this is the last movie I will mention on this list that I do not own, <laughs> um, is Out of Africa from 1985. I, I like Meryl Streep um, as an actress, not so much as a person, but as an actress I like her. Um, didn't like the movie. I love the music, I love the sound, the score, the soundtrack, that was great. But just, just didn't like it, it just didn't click with me. And number 22 is A Man for All Seasons from 1966. And the only reason this is on the list so low is just because I like other movies. I thought it was very good, though. Um, it deserved... I mean, in, in retrospect, all these movies deserved what they got. Um, 
if they weren't good, they wouldn't have been nominated, and they wouldn't have won, but this one just kind of is a little bit lower on the rating ranking for me. Um, number 21 is The Greatest Show on Earth. I must say, The Greatest Showman. The Greatest Show on Earth from 1952. This one gets a lot of slack for winning. Um, I don't remember every movie that was nominated that year. Oh, I can't even remember what movies were nominated that year that it beat out. 1952 must not have been a very memorable year. <laughs> Uh, Sing in the Rain was 1952, but it wasn't nominated. Um, but I do know The Greatest Show on Earth, I almost said showman again, <laughs> The Greatest Show on Earth does get a lot of slack for its win. I disagree with that, though. At number 20 is Amadeus. Now, you may think, oh, Amadeus is rated R, and that's kind of what I thought for a long time. The director's cut is rated R. The initial theater theatrical presentation and the earlier DVDs of it, the earlier VHSs of it, all PG-13 or PG. PG, PG-13, one of the two. Um, it's only in the last couple of years when the director did a director's cut that it became rated R. Um, so this, and I do own it, it's the, 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 the non-rated R version of it. Sorry, my back's still really hurts. But, I mean, when I listen to Mozart, I think of back to my ballet days, and it just, you know, it's kind of fun to see the quirkiness of it too a little bit. Um, number 19, it's Chariots of Fire from 1981. Um, for me, this movie, I really enjoyed I think it also gets a bit of slack uh, for winning, which, again, I cannot remember what it beat out. <laughs> It's so bad. Um, you know, it's based on the real events, real people. Uh, the music is very iconic. All you have to do is go da 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 da, da and you know exactly what that's from. Uh, <laughs> or when you say Cherry of Fire, that's the first thing that pops into your head. Um, at number 18 is Gigi from 1959. I'm sorry, I don't know this movie either. But, uh, <laughs> I was thinking just the ones I don't like, I don't own. But no, that one I don't, don't own either. Um, it's been a little while since I've seen this movie, and I know this one also gets a lot of slack for its win. Um, which again, I cannot remember what it beat out. <laughs> and actually, I think this is 1958, not 1959. I think Ben-Hur was 1959. Anyway, um... Moving on to number 17, which is You Can't Take It With You from 1938. Hey, we got some 30s in here. Um, I think before that, the earliest I had was 1952. Um, no, 1949. Anyway, back to You Can't Take It With You from 1938. This movie I thought was was adorable. I mean, it was cute. It was kind of quirky. I love Jimmy Stewart. Um, pretty much anything with him in it, I think, is deserving of the acclaim and awards that it gets, uh, or he gets. So, at number sixteen is the best years of our lives from nineteen forty six. Speaking of Jimmy Stewart, his movie, I personally. That he he was in. I personally would have given the Oscar to. It was nominated, which is It's a Wonderful Life, which for me I think kind of holds up the test of time a little bit better than the best years of our lives did, and does. But watch the best years of our lives. There, it is very poignant. It's very. Um, emotional. Uh, button pushing kind of a little bit. Um, but it's also very humanizing in my mind. Um, so I do think it was deserving of the win and also Best Actor win. However, in both cases, I would have given it to It's a Wonderful Life and Jimmy Stewart. So. Uh, number 15 is Dances with Wolves from 1990. 
this is the first movie on the list really from my childhood that I would actually really remember from my kid childhood from my kid from my childhood uh, the reason I say that is While I was alive in 1984 and 85, I was a baby. So, <laughs> but this was really the first movie that came out with my memory of it. And I watched this movie several times uh, growing up at home with my older brother and my parents. And I really enjoyed it. It is a little long, and I think as a kid, I maybe thought it was a little boring and stuff. But as an older person, as I got older, I began to enjoy it more. Um, at number 14 is The Artist from 2011. That's actually the most recent movie I have on this list. Um, I don't go out and watch Oscar winning Best Picture movies. I do go out and watch Oscar nominated Best Picture movies, but not winning, um, apparently. <laughs> um, and the reason I say that is because this year, uh, I saw two movies that were nominated, Post and Darkest Hour, but neither one won. Um, back to the artist. This to me was really interesting. I saw this movie after it came out on DVD, after it had already won. Uh, when it won, I hadn't seen it yet. I was really, really pulling for the help to win. Uh, I really wanted the help to win. I still personally would have given it to the help. But... After watching the movie, I could totally see all the elements that that put the movie on top and um, the intriguingness of it. And number 13 is Titanic from 1997. My oldest brother went and saw this movie like three or four times in the theater, and I thought he was insane for watching a movie that many times, but I have to call myself a hypocrite on that one because I've done it. But, uh, <laughs> most recently with The Good Showman. But, um, Titanic, it's just kind of one of those really iconic movies. It does get a lot of backlash now. Uh, a lot of these movies that, that won as years go by, they're like, oh, they sucked, or this movie should have won over this movie, and it's kind of funny, in my opinion. But, um... At the time, it was one of the, it was the biggest grossing movie. It's still one of the biggest grossing movies. So it was a very well received movie, and I enjoyed it. A little long, but I enjoyed it. Um, at number twelve is *Gentleman's Agreement* from 1947. This one for me, I thought was really interesting, and I loved Gregory Peck's role in the movie. Speaking of long movies, at number 11 is Gone with the Wind from 1939, which was the first movie to web Best Picture that was in color. Uh, all the movies that had won before that were in black and white. Um, this one, again, a long... I didn't see this movie until I was in my 20s, and it was about mid-20s, and um, but I really enjoyed it, and I actually, like beg my mom to buy me the movie. Um, at number 10, we're in the top 10. Uh, at number 10 is From Here to Eternity from 1943. I saw this movie because, 1953, sorry. I saw this movie because I am a humongous, major, ridiculously big fan of, not Frank Sinatra, but Montgomery Clift. He is the only reason why I saw this movie. And he is brilliant in the movie. I mean, all the other ones are good, too. Totally would have given him Best picture, or best Actor. It didn't go to him. It went to William Holden for Spelag 17 or something like that, which I have not seen. But love Montgomery Clift in the movie. The movie itself is very good as well. <laughs> um, At number nine is Forrest Gump from 1994. Much like Meryl Streep, I love, like, Tom Hanks' acting. Don't have a lot of respect for him as an individual person, but I love his acting. And he is my favorite actor. Uh, Forrest Gump still, again, 
gets a lot of backlash today for it winning over Shawshank. Shank, Shaw, Shawshank, there we go, Shawshank Redemption, Pulp Fiction, but you know what, it, I haven't seen those movies, so I don't really, but personally, I still think that Forrest Gump, even over those movies, stand the test of time, you still hear people go, run, Forrest, run, not very often, I mean, I do it, but, <laughs> but you still hear that sometimes, or like, my mom always said life was like a little box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. I mean, it has such iconic lines. Stupid is, a stupid does. Um, Bubble Gump is a, a, you know, a chain restaurant now. So, um, I'm going to do the last eight really quickly because I'm like going really long. Um, <laughs> Um, at number eight is Driving Miss Daisy from 1989. I personally would have given it to Dead Poet Society. However, D uh, Driving Miss Daisy is also very, very good. Uh, number seven is Kramer vs. Kramer from 1979. And um, I just love the movie. I, I, again, I didn't watch it until my 20s, but I thought it was very good. Um, Dustin Hoffman pulled off one of the most brilliant performances I've ever seen. At number six, is it is 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 is, 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 is <laughs> it happened one night from 1934, and that is the oldest movie on this list. And um, I just love this movie. Clark Gable and Claudette Colbert's chemistry in this movie, their you know, the, the the writing, the filming, it's just all brilliant. At number five is Rebecca from 1940. It is the only Alfred Hitchcock movie to win Best Picture. I just love the way that um, Alfred Hitchcock used the camera as the character of Rebecca. It is just awesome. At number four, three, two, and one are all musicals. <laughs> number four is American in Paris from 1951. I love, 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 love Gene Kelly. Gene Kelly by far is the best song and dance band ever. Yes, better than Fred Astaire. This is not my favorite Gene Kelly movie that belongs to Sing in the Rain. However, this one is very good. Number three, West Side Story from 1961. Modern day Romeo and Juliet story. But it's... The songs are catching. The, the, the themes are also still very relevant, I think, and relatable and humanizing. Uh, number two and number one, really the only reasons why they're two and one is just because of the years they came out. Number two is The Sound of Music from 1965. I grew up on Rodgers and Hammerstein. Sound of Music is not my favorite Rodgers and Hammerstein movie. My favorite movie was nominated, which is The King and I, but it lost out to Around the World in 80 Days. So it's not on this list. Uh, <laughs> but I do love The Sound of Music, although it's... Like my third Rogers and Hammerstein favorite movie, but it's still very good. Um, sadly, in the last couple of years, they lost the two older girls, and the the two actresses that played the two oldest girls they passed away. But um, anyway, and then on to number one, 1964, My Fair Lady. I again only put it above the sound of music because it came out the year before. Those two are pretty much neck and neck. I uh, I love My Fair Lady. Audrey Hepburn, Rex Harrison, their chemistry, their interactions with each other were brilliant. Um, I think it was on purpose that they put Audrey Hepburn as awarding Best Actor to Rex Harrison for this particular movie. But that is my top uh, Best Winning Picture movies that I have seen and or own, all 27 of them.